Hi, Parker. Hello, Keenan. Hello. So today, um, I wanted to bring up one of my favorite uh, portions of this talk um, that Eckhart had in year 2012. Um, it's on Socrates. Let me play the video and then let's go. Um, maybe we can talk about it. to spiritual awakening, well, that looks like a huge success. And you might have lost your job. You might have done the wrong thing. Maybe you made one mistake after another, perhaps, some of you, or many mistakes. One wrong choice and another wrong choice. And why did I get together with that person? That was a dreadful mistake. I should never have taken that job, and then, and then that was wrong. Why did I do that for 10 years? That was so pointless. Okay, but it's suddenly, all that which didn't make sense, retrospectively, suddenly seems to make sense, because it's taken you to, oh. So the chaos of your past, and I'm talking about that because my past is a bit like that. that. One mistake after another, why? One failure and another failure and not up to the age of 50 almost, a failure in the eyes of the world, and then suddenly a success. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't a failure, of course, and I didn't see it as a failure. I was a failure up to the age of 29 before the awakening happened. That was the dreadful thing. And after that, there was no conceptual identity, particularly. And so, every present moment was actually basically fine without carrying the burden of a conceptual identity, the present moment is actually okay. There may be some discomfort in it sometimes, but okay, okay. but that's how it is. It's basically still okay. For a while, I, when I was going through the awakening, I lived in a bed sitter. Bed sitter is where you have a room where you cook and sleep and sit, a bed sitter. <laughs> It doesn't have a bathroom, so you have to share the bathroom with other bed sitters. Bed <laughs> <laughs> so my particular, the, the toilet had to be shared with six other bed sitters. And sometimes in the morning you have to line up to wait for the to go to the loo. And that was just what was. It was, yes, some discomfort, leading occasionally to constipation, but... <laughs> <laughs> and there wasn't much, you had only a little, a little stove with two little rings, so you couldn't do much cooking, but it worked with the baked beans. <laughs> so the, the present moment was basically fine. Yes, there could be more comfort and so on, yes, but it's basically fine. There was aliveness, beauty outside, there was the sky, there were trees, a couple of potted plants, there was the city, walking around the city, mm, alive, it's fine. Without the burden of a conceptual identity, the me with its problems and its past and its future, it's basically fine. The part of the video where he talks about Heinz baked beans and two rings and he's in a bed sitter. Um, I love his humility in the fact that he, he was so surrendered in that present moment to his meager circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, I remember um, when I was little, 
like uh, when when we were seven, eight years old, my mom had moved us into this uh, one bedroom house that the roof used to leak and we were very surrendered. Like we were little kids. It was fun to figure out the next leak and put a bucket or a container under the leak. And we went through so many rainy season, um, like with the water dripping inside the house. So I feel like that is what he's teaching is be surrendered to this present moment, no matter what form it takes. How do you feel, uh, Parker, when you watch the video? Well, first it strikes me as a beautiful demonstration of how the world around us opens up, blooms like a flower as soon as we surrender to uh, what is and the voices uh, in our head uh, cease. Uh, and then when we do have thoughts, uh, they're quality thoughts, but we get to see the potted plants and the city and the beautiful sky. Uh, whereas in an unconscious, unawakened state or an attached state, we would be standing under the sky beside the potted plant, uh, ruminating about the difficulty of the situation and you know, whatever archetype the ego wants to ride, something like that through victimness oftentimes. Uh, the other thing that I love about this video is about the very beginning of it, how it described uh, letting go of what we don't know and we don't know anything. We, it would be like extracting a pixel out of a painting and trying to describe the painting. Uh, so letting go of needing to know what the next thing is or judging uh, the uh, uh, chaos as just chaos, not recognizing that there's also order and that that is a paradox as most true things are. So the, to just leave the circumstances alone, stay in alignment, with the subtle voice uh, that's with us in the, the stillness in the present moment, which is here, whether we want to be in it or not, <laughs> it's still here. And it's a, just uh, uh, very beautiful. And you don't have to be a spiritual person to surrender. I've seen people that weren't waking up that have are already practiced in uh, various areas of uh, waking up, various what do you call that? Layers of waking up, peeling away. So, uh, yeah, a, a powerful video. Thank you, Kunam. Thank you, Barker. This is good.